OpenAI will be launching GPT 4.5 Turbo in June this year. It will have a larger context window and up-to-date information. The CTO Mira Marathi's vague responses regarding the data sources for Sora have sparked scrutiny. Google DeepMind introduces Saima, a generalist AI agent capable of understanding and performing tasks in various video game environments. Figure AI has integrated OpenAI's chat GPT into its humanoid robot. Apple has acquired the artificial intelligence startup Darwin AI, integrating its Canadian team into Apple's AI division. Indian government revoked the restrictions on AI model training approvals, the latest approved EU AI Act, and more awesome AI news. Also, at the end, there is a list of 61 companies that are hiring in robotics. Hi guys, welcome to Digest Prompt, where we bring to you the latest developments in the field of AI, starting with the biggest leak of the week through search engine. OpenAI will be launching GPT 4.5 Turbo in June this year. It will have a larger context window and up-to-date information. The context window, which determines how many words the model can process simultaneously, is specified in the teaser text as 256,000 tokens, twice as many as GPT-4 Turbo's 128K. 256,000 tokens is about 200,000 words. I'm excited about it, are you? Another update from OpenAI. The CTO Mira Marathi's vague responses regarding the data sources for Sora, OpenAI's new AI model, have sparked scrutiny. Despite claims of using publicly available and licensed data, specific details were not disclosed. This lack of clarity, especially on whether social media data was used, has attracted the FTC's attention, intensifying the legal and regulatory challenges OpenAI faces amidst ongoing investigations and lawsuits. Let's hear it. What data was used to train Sora? We used publicly available data and licensed data. So, videos on YouTube? I'm actually not sure about that. Okay. Videos from Facebook, Instagram? You know, if they were publicly available, um, available, yeah, publicly available to use, um, there might be the data, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not confident about it. What about Shutterstock? I know you guys have a deal with them. I'm, I'm just not going to go into the details of, of the data that was that was used, but it was publicly available or licensed data. Also, according to this article, Sora is set to be publicly available later this year, potentially within a few months. The tool, initially for visual artists and filmmakers, can create hyper-realistic scenes from text prompts. OpenAI plans to add audio features and editing capabilities to enhance realism and accuracy. We are dying to test it and make a tutorial once it is launched. Next is a very interesting research from Google. DeepMind introduces Saima, a generalist AI agent capable of understanding and performing tasks in various video game environments based on natural language instructions. This breakthrough demonstrates the potential of AI to navigate and interact within complex 3D virtual worlds, laying the groundwork for more versatile and helpful AI systems in real-world applications. We see this as a smart move to train AI agents better, as game scenarios are so complex, and when their AI model will be able to quickly adapt and learn game settings, then in the longer run, the AI will be so well-trained to be piloted to real-world. Yes, this is the building block of humanoids with AGI. Meta, OpenAI, and now Google. Everyone is taking their steps towards building AGI robots. The AI world is updating at such a high pace. At this moment, we would like to ask you to like this video and subscribe if you appreciate the effort. We bring to you all such updates, on time, and in a curated form that you can also uplift your AI knowledge. Also, you can check out our AI automation agency at digestprompt.io. On a similar note, Figure AI has integrated OpenAI's ChatGPT into its humanoid robot, Figure01, adding a voice feature that enables natural conversation and task execution. This advancement marks a significant step in humanoid robotics, combining dexterous actions with high-level intelligence. 
With $675 million in Series B funding from major tech investors, including OpenAI, Figure AI is at the forefront of developing robots with advanced AI capabilities, potentially paving the way for applications in various industries. Next is the new approved EU AI Act. Louisa has summarized this well in her tweet, so we picked it from there. The AI Act follows a risk-based approach. High-risk AI systems will be assessed before being put on the market and also throughout their life cycle. People will have the right to file complaints about AI systems to designated national authorities. Generative AI, like ChatGPT, will not be classified as high-risk, but will have to comply with transparency requirements and EU copyright law. Some of the obligations are disclosing that the content was generated by AI, designing the model to prevent it from generating illegal content and publishing summaries of copyrighted data used for training. This AI Act is expected to officially become law by May or June, and its provisions will start taking effect in stages. Six months later, countries will be required to ban prohibited AI systems. One year later, rules for general-purpose AI systems will start applying. Two years later, the whole AI Act will be enforceable. Fines for non-compliance can be up to 35 million euros, or 7% of worldwide annual turnover. Next big news, India has revised its AI advisory, removing the requirement for government approval before deploying AI models. Now, companies are advised to label any under-tested or unreliable AI models to inform users of potential issues. This change comes after significant criticism from entrepreneurs and investors globally. The revised guidelines aim to balance innovation with consumer protection, focusing on transparency around AI model reliability. Next big news, Apple has acquired the artificial intelligence startup Darwin AI, integrating its Canadian team into Apple's AI division. If you have been following us for a while, we recently covered that Apple shut down their EV car wing focus more on generative AI. Darwin AI is known for its AI technology that aids in the visual inspection of manufacturing components across different industries, so they will probably use it to optimize their manufacturing process. By the way, did you know that it takes only $10 to make iPhone 14? So all the extra money that we pay is for their branding, essentially. Next news, everybody wants to keep up with their AI game. Mercedes-Benz is experimenting with humanoid robots like Aptronics Apollo to automate tasks in their manufacturing process. Apollo, a 160-pound bipedal robot, is being tested for its ability to deliver parts to production line workers. Apollo's capabilities include lifting objects up to 55 pounds. This trial aims to automate physically demanding and repetitive tasks, potentially addressing labor shortages without needing to redesign manufacturing facilities. Eventually, the problem of labor shortages might turn into layoffs if they deploy these robots and they perform well. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Next news, Anthropic has released Claude 3, Haiku, the latest in its Claude 3 AI model series, designed for high speed and affordability. Tailored for applications requiring quick response times and large volume processing, Haiku excels in tasks such as customer support chats. It offers advanced vision capabilities and prioritizes enterprise-grade security. Haiku complements other models in the Claude 3 family, providing a versatile toolset for various business needs. Next, the FTC is investigating Reddit's practices related to licensing user data to AI companies as the platform approaches its IPO. This inquiry indicates the FTC's increasing interest in AI data deals and their implications on competition and consumer privacy. Reddit being foreseeing AI partnerships as a significant revenue source has reassured it follows fair practices. Let's see how it goes. We will keep you updated. Next, Adobe Firefly, similar to Google's Gemini, has faced criticism for generating historically inaccurate AI images. This highlights ongoing challenges in AI image creation technology across the tech industry, including issues related to racial and ethnic depictions. 
Despite Adobe's efforts to train its model responsibly using licensed images, the technology still produced unexpected results, such as depictions of black soldiers fighting for Nazi Germany. This situation underscores the complexity of AI training and the industry-wide struggle to manage AI-generated content sensitively. So the very last news for today, TechCrunch published this article where they listed 61 robotics companies that are hiring. I will pin the link in the comments section below. So that's all for today. Subscribe us for more AI updates and tutorials. Also, check out our AI automation agency at digestprompt.io where we integrate AI into businesses. We are also present on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. All the links are there in the description below.